Welcome back to our Composer's Spotlight, where we're learning about Tchaikovsky. So now we're going to go ahead and dive back into Tchaikovsky's ballets. And let's look at his second and longest ballet. This one was called Sleeping Beauty. And he composed so much music for this ballet that if people were to perform the entire thing, it would all last almost four hours with intermissions. That's a long time. So most of the time when this is performed, the performers cut some of it out. A lot of this ballet can be heard in Disney's animated film Sleeping Beauty. It's actually quite amazing how much of that soundtrack came from Tchaikovsky's ballet. So if you've seen the Disney film, you'll, pro you'll probably remember the song I know you, I walked with you once upon a dream. That whole theme was actually written by Tchaikovsky, and the name of that piece is The Sleeping Beauty Waltz. So go ahead and listen to that and see how similar it is to the Disney version. And then in 1892, Tchaikovsky composed his third and final ballet titled The Nutcracker. This also contains very good examples of how skilled Tchaikovsky was at symphonic poems and composing music that gives such a good backdrop and descriptive soundtrack of what scene he's accompanying. This ballet's storyline is based on the E.T.A. Hoffman story of The Nutcracker and the Mouse King. Basically, the story is set during Christmas time, and this little girl befriends a nutcracker who comes to life and they have a battle against the evil Mouse King. One of the most memorably descriptive word painting pieces in the ballet is the dance of the sugar plum fairy. This piece sounds very delicate and magical, just like a fairy, and he gets this effect partially because he uses the instrument called the celeste. He heard the celeste during his travels through Paris and immediately thought of it using it to portray his sugar plum fairy. So he got a hold of one and wrote it straight into the nutcracker. So if you haven't already heard this piece, try listening to the dance of the sugar plum fairy. All right. So then in 1893, which was the year of Tchaikovsky's death, spoiler alert, Tchaikovsky composed the Symphony No. 6 in B minor. He named it the Passionate Symphony, but when it was translated into French, they called it Pathétique, which to us means pathetic or evoking pity, but he meant for it to be called Passionate. That was the last work he ever wrote, and here's a quote from him about it, saying, Without exaggeration, I have put my whole soul into this work. This possibly is the work that is known as his greatest masterpiece, or at least his most celebrated masterpiece, and it really does sound like he put his whole soul into it because it's very, very beautiful and tragic. Um, he also made the symphony different from most symphonies because most symphonies have the normal layout of four movements. So the first one is allegro, sort of middling movement, then the second movement is slow, and then the third is this more exciting scherzo or minuet, which is a dance. And then the fourth movement is supposed to be exciting, sort of like the grand finale of the whole piece kind of building up to this fourth movement. But Tchaikovsky decided to make his fourth movement an adagio, which is a very slow tempo, and the symphony just fades away instead of ending with a bang. Um, so for listening, go ahead and choose one of those four movements for symphony number six. Um, the middle two are more exciting and lively, while the outer two are more plaintively, hauntingly, beautiful and tragic. So you can decide which movement you want to listen to or you can listen to the whole symphony. Each movement is amazing. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We think music is great in so many ways. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when we post new videos.